just that decision to be an artist, to be an actor and tell your story, that is part of part of the agency that a lot of black people were taking on board to f define themselves. I will be, I'm an artist, I can tell my story. Ah, keep them under double guard, tomorrow they'll be taken to Batasium charge. Charged with what, Mr. Butterfield? Treason! To me, black magic. You are a European. How could I expect you to understand something I am unable to explain to myself? I don't know! You want to burn it? No! No! Where is it? No! Where is it? The earliest memories of Louis um, are when I met him on what was then, shows you how long ago it was, the Coloured Artist Committee. My earliest recollection of Louis Mahoney was as a young lawyer and anti-apartheid activist myself, of Louis being in the forefront of the struggle of artists against apartheid. Louis was one of the first people that I was introduced to in the industry. And um, he was also one of the members of Equity at the time and really helped in you know, explaining what needs to be done. I think I met Louis for the first time in the 70s, man. Was, wow. that, when I was going for me, Professional equity card. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the 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 the, the, like the provisional. The provi thing. You know, <laughs> little red one. And they red get the blue one. And they one. get the blue yeah, one. Yeah, and yeah. then you know you're special. Mr. Forty. Just. <laughs> thing. Oh, oh, how, how do you do that, sir? You should get as much rest as you can. There was, would have been pressure on him to follow um, the route that the family had taken. They were a, a very educated, influential family, so a lot of doctors, um, teachers, lawyers. But I never forget his passion for acting. Out of nowhere, a big old turtle appeared and told the man to get on his back. How do you justify your intimacy with a power that's the enemy of self-determination for the African people? I think what's really important to understand about Louis Mahoney is that it wasn't so much a matter of mere diversity. It's not about faces in places, it was about equality. Um, and he has a phenomenal artistic legacy of the stories he told and the characters he played. I acted out of concern for someone I hold very dear. Frank is asking to give you 24. There are those people who are just... who are able to go their own way. They're able to, f to stand up for what is right. And that was very much part of his personality. That's he became vice president, our first black vice president in 1994 uh, to 96. And it is an incredible legacy that he's left behind that every single equity member feels when they work on a union agreement, when they see anti-racism in action in our workplaces. That is all Louis. That is his living legacy in 2022. I'm going to stay with you, OK? Thank you, Sally Sparrow. I have till the rain stops. Of course, you know him better than I. Though I'm sure he would listen to He had a consciousness about himself and a political consciousness about the black community, which was integral to his work and to his being. And that's, for me, is I think the two strands of what Louis' contribution, outstanding contribution to British theatre film industry. Let's not forget when Louis was campaigning for a cultural boycott of South Africa, this was not a popular cause. He faced huge opposition. You would have to overfly South African territory. Black activism in the 70s was a serious business. You know, standing up against the South African government and also, we have to be honest here, the British government were not exactly supportive. I saw for myself as High Commissioner of the United Kingdom to South Africa, just how much Louis was known and respected within South Africa. We need to see that celebrated and commemorated here in the United Kingdom. He was a great artist, a human rights activist, and a man to be remembered with fondness and respect. I was approached um, by Central. They wanted to set up a scholarship in his name and had an anonymous donor who was keen to do that. In a weird way, it really felt like um, he was looking down, you know, that, that sense of pride, talking to these scholars at the place that he trained, in an area he lived in, um, you know, with his family. I just, yeah, it felt, it felt amazing. So often, 
people are airbrushed from history and it's so important particularly for well, younger students and it's great that there's you know a memory of him sacrificed and that's the huge word that's also the word for louis there were a lot of sacrifices made for the profession for the industry for young people coming up so central it's a huge honor the last show i did with him was called alleluia um, he was very ill then. Um, he, I knew that he was ill, and he asked me not to tell the other members of the company. Amazing actor and person. He was an artist. I would say he was a Renaissance man in many ways. You can see that in his career. And in many ways, that is why he was the perfect. If there was ever you needed someone who was a representative for you, it was Lou Mahoney. Dad was a great man, you know, he did some amazing things um, and touched so many lives. Casting now, you know, because it's changed so much and he did so much to make sure that that happened. Legend, icon, you will always be remembered. There's no doubt about that. Louis Mahoney was a mighty tree. Hambakali, Louis. Hambakali, go well. <laughs>